Steve, the concept of affect, human feelings and emotions, is exceedingly important in understanding our consciousness. I learned this at your feet, so to speak, uh, almost 30 years ago, and it was a, a really great revelation to me. I'd been trained as a neurophysiologist, but to really begin to understand the power of affect, how can we begin to understand it from a systems point of view? Well, it's a, it's a question that has been very much alive for me over many years because much of my teaching has to do with uh, efforts to answer that question to the satisfaction of MIT undergraduates. Uh, the approach that we've taken is to see uh, affect as an aspect of the organization and development of human systems human systems including the nervous system, the brain, human systems including the organism, the individual, and human systems including social systems and institutions. We find that uh, counterparts of what we experience psychologically as our feelings exist in the functioning of the nervous system on the one hand, particularly in terms of the organization of the so-called limbic system of the brain. And on the social level of organization, we find that just as we have feelings, organizations and institutions have values. Uh, and uh, just as individuals have attitudes, which are both thoughts and feelings, organizations and institutions have value systems and worldviews. So that the same fundamental mode of organization appears to move across and between levels of organization in human systems. And it's a little bit like thinking in terms of a, uh, a series of sections that you're looking down through. You may see certain features in the organization of the nervous system, which are not readily apparent in the organization of the individual's behavior or in the institutional framework. But by looking through the layers, mm -hmm. you can begin to think about how things from one level might map onto other levels. Describe the limbic system, the emotional center of the brain. Right, well maybe the best way to do it is with this model uh, of the human brain. Uh, the limbic system, we tend to think about the brain in terms of a, uh, a threefold major mode of organization. The outermost overlying cortex is primarily concerned with functions of the kind we'd call cognitive as opposed to affective or uh, in relation to feelings. The feelings regions of the brain are in a a, a circle of structures that surround the deepest lying regions of the core brain and both sep separated from and connected with the overlying cortex. These structures deep within the brain comprise the limbic system. And within the limbic system are, a again, a large number of different structures mm -hmm. whose interrelationships are exceedingly complex. But what we know is just as we know that the integrity of the overlying cortex is essential for the competency of cognitive functions, so by the same token, the, uh, the integrity of the underlying limbic system is essential for the mediation of the things that we experience as feelings. We also have increasing evidence to the effect that the integrity of the affective systems of the brain are essential for the proper functioning mm -hmm. of the cognitive processes. So that cognition and affect, although they are distinguishable as thoughts and feelings are, are essentially interdependent aspects of the functioning of the brain. And what are some of those uh, structures within the limbic system? Well, the one that has received the, the most attention is a structure called the amygdala. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with this particular model, but what I can do is to show you approximately 
the location of the amygdala deep within the temporal lobe mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the brain. And the amygdala receives inputs from all of the sensory systems of the body and uh, has a particularly privileged uh, relationship to the sense of smell or olfaction, mm -hmm. which feeds directly into the amygdala. And from our own experience, we know how effectively loaded the <laughs> sense of smell is, both for better or for worse, <laughs> that uh, as people like to say, the nose knows. <laughs> and that's because of the primacy of mm. the olfactory input to the uh, amygdala. So if we integrate it all together, the three systems, the neurobiological, the personal psychological, and the sociological uh, external world, how can we then begin to understand better the concept of affect emotions? Well, again, I think that the, uh, the appropriate reference frame is always that of the individual with a nervous system in a context. And that in order to understand how the affective aspects of experience are organized, we have to look at how the brain is structured and how the various parts of the brain interact under conditions of emotional arousal. And we need to know something about the surrounding social context in which the same uh, phenomena take place. It's not sufficient to focus only on the experience of the individual without regard to what's going on in the nervous system, nor is it possible to focus only on the nervous system without paying attention to what's going on in the surrounding context. And it's fascinating that you cannot so cleanly differentiate between the intellectual, cognitive, and the affective feelings, emotions that people in the past thought you could. That they exactly. were totally different kinds exactly. of things and you can segregate one from the other. So it's important to understand that even at this very uh, sort of fundamental level of division of the brain into different segments, a cortical system that is primarily associated with cognition, a limbic system that's primarily associated with affect, that neither of these act independently of the other. It is fundamentally a process of interaction that gives rise to the behavior, to the feelings, and to the thoughts. And we see that in literally the pathways, the neuroanatomical pathways between these areas, and you see it in, in real life. I mean, it, 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 is, it is not contrary to common sense. It Absolutely. is common sense. It is quite commonsensical. <laughs>